Hey everyone, so today we're fishing on one of many lakes in the Thompson Nicola region. I've been fishing in this area for several years now, but still consider myself fairly uh, uh, a beginner well, when it comes to fishing in this area uh, because I've only been every year I come up here once, uh, two or three times. Uh, today we're fishing with uh, Brian Chan, and who's a fairly uh, very knowledgeable local angler, and you may probably have seen him in. Uh, TV shows such as BC Outdoor Sport Fishing and also on Shore TV and uh, Brian and I both have worked together on the, with the Freshwater Fish Society of BC uh, m many times as well and uh, but we never fished together so thanks yeah. for inviting us out. Oh, it's great to have you in the boat Rod. Yeah thanks so what are we fishing for today? Well, we're trying to catch rainbows yeah um, and uh, they grow pretty big in this lake and there's uh, both uh, the Blackwater Strain and the Fraser Valley Strain of rainbows in this right, lake. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so w when we're talking about different strains of rainbow trout, uh, different variety, uh, what, what do you mean exactly? So different, uh, the Fresh Water Society of BC utilizes several different strains or, or different races of rainbow trout mm -hmm. uh, to stock into various lakes in, in the province. And so the Blackwater, for instance, the Blackwater uh, Strain originate from the Blackwater River in the uh, Central BC and uh, are stocked in on several hundred lakes probably in the province. And then the Fraser Valleys, uh, as you're familiar with them, are, are, are typically used in the uh, catchable stocking program in right. urban lakes, but they have application in the interior for lakes that have winter killed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so coming from Vancouver, fishing in urban lakes such as Rice Lake and Lafarge Lake, uh, the Fraser Valley rainbow trout that we catch are catchable size and they're typically around Two, three hundred grams. Yep. Um, but they don't grow much bigger than that, and it's 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 a it's a great fishery for entry level anglers. But uh, again, they, they they usually stay pretty small. But coming to this area, the Fraser Valley rainbow trout, how big do, do they get in this area? Yeah. Oh, they get huge. And uh, uh, so on this lake, Logan Lake, for instance, if they if these fish live for if the Fraser Valleys live for several years in here, they'll be. Uh, well over, well they're well over five pounds and, and easily reach 10 pounds. Wow. It's all about groceries. There's, these lakes are far more productive than coastal lakes. Right. And so there's a lot more uh, plant life, a lot more fish habitat, and a lot more diversity in food sources for fish. Okay, so that's why they can grow much bigger. Exactly. Yeah. Right. There's one. That, oh, there it goes. Got a good one there, Rod. Yeah, it's pretty nice. So this is just staying pretty deep down. Yeah, they're down deep. They're yeah. 15 to 18 feet down. We're in 22 feet of water. Well, that feels pretty good. <laughs> We've been trying for what, two hours? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Watching people catching fish. <laughs> yep. There's they're well conditioned fish in here. Yeah. Oh, oh. Well, I might right. have to indicator, pull your yeah. indicator for you. Oh. I'll swing it across for you. Thank you. So we're cheating a little bit because. <laughs> Been trying chronometers and not working, and our friend Ken over there been catching them in flat winds. So we threw a, one of these flies over here, and I got along here right now. And what do you know? Catching fish. Yeah. Now. <laughs> That's a chunky fish. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's a beautiful. That feels good. <laughs> it's a beautiful Fraser Valley. Yeah. Rainbow. Okay. So like I said, this is the exact same strain that we catch down in the open lake. Exactly. Except this is 10 times bigger. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You got the food, they're going to grow. Right. Look at that. Yeah. Look how thick fish. it is. Yeah. 
and very 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 spotted so and that's a very typical characteristic for Fraser Valley Fraser Valley, yeah. right? They don't Whereas, jump, they pull down, they fight deep, right. pull down hard. Okay. That's a three, three and a quarter, three and a half pound fish or more. So we see a little shrimp right there. And uh, you, so you want to pump this fish? Yeah, we just gotta have a quick look. So ideally on a big fish like this, hold them upside down, that disorientates them in the net. You can actually drop the net. Okay, right in the drop water. the net, yeah. Squeeze it. Put the pump in the water, squeeze it a few times to lubricate it, but get all the water out of the bowl. And then just depress it. So you squeeze down the pump yeah. while you pull it in. S slide it in. Narrowing of the esophagus, it forms a vacuum. Then you just back it out. Okay. That's it. Fish doesn't leave the water. Okay. And we'll, we've okay. got a sample of what he's eating. Okay, so what are we doing? Let him go. We'll let him go, yeah. Okay. Finally, nice fish. Yeah. It's oh, ready yeah. to go. So let's see what he was eating, Rod, before you fooled him. <laughs> shrimp. Yeah, a few shrimps in there. A couple small gamma shrimp and that's it. Mm -hmm. So that was a little work getting that one fish. <laughs> yeah, we spent the first couple hours just looking around and looked down there and didn't really get anything. Yeah. And yeah. these guys here have been catching fish on bloodworms. Yeah, bloodworms. Which yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a little different for this time of year, but it's, you know, as I mentioned earlier, it's a summer doldrum, so yeah, gotta, you got to move and you've got to be willing to try different stuff. Yeah, I guess stuff. you just never know. It's, it's, a, it's, a pretty, uh, it's a pretty frustrating process, isn't it? Just to yeah. Oh yeah, no, it can be, especially yeah. if, you've, you know, if you're not on the water on a regular basis. Right, get, right. Get dialed in, so. Mm -hmm. Especially if people are catching fish around you. <laughs> yeah. Then you, get, you start panicking, you know? Yeah. But, but everywhere we've... Everywhere we've been and had a bite, or anywhere yep. you caught this fish, there's been other fish moving. Right. Like we've seen fish jump or flip mm -hmm. or yeah. roll. Yeah, it's definitely no shorty that action around. I, had, I missed one over there before earlier, just a little bite. And this one didn't take it very down very much as well. It just kind of just went down yep. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. No, they're pretty light takes. I mean, yeah. they're not, well, obviously, we, we did that throat bump in that fish, and there's two shrimp in yeah. the throat. Mm -hmm. That's all that fish had in his throat. Right. So, yeah. Not really, really feeding aggressively. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's going on here? So how many, how many lakes are there around this area where, where people can go fishing in general? Just the, the region three. Thompson yeah. Well, Nicholas. in region three, there's there's over a thousand lakes. Well, well. With fish in region in the Thompson Nicola region. Yeah. Um, and there's about 400 of them are stocked. Right. But uh, if you look at downtown Kamloops, with an hour's drive of downtown Kamloops, there's well over 100 lakes that you could access right. for day trips. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if you expand that boundary to include the Kamloops to Merritt, then you're you're into two and three hundred lakes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, lots to choose from. Yeah. And there's, I guess they all differ from one another. Some are very family friendly and. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so the, if, when you when you look at the regulations, you can see family-friendly lakes have, have more liberal uh, limits, uh, and they don't have the gear restrictions on them. Right. And they're open in the winter time for fishing. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess the access is pretty easy. Yeah, and the access is easy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they're and they're stocked, or they actually some of the good family fishing lakes are are wild fisheries. Right. They're just overpopulated with fish. Right. And so they're really easy to catch. Hmm. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, I see when we came into this lake, Logan Lake, that there's actually a fishing pier. Yeah, I see there. how many and people are on it. Yeah, there were, there were quite a few kids fishing down there too, and they, they had a pretty nice yeah. fish as well. So that's, that's right. That's always good to see. Yeah. 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 And lots of different camping spots as well, right by the lake. So you can, besides fishing, you can also include camping and Actually, Logan Lake is about as urban as you can get right. for, for yeah. this area yeah. with the highway right beside it. Exactly, but yeah. It is a very productive fishery as you've seen the size and the condition factor of the yeah. fish. Yeah. Yeah, you're pretty lucky to be living around here. Yeah, no, we are. Yeah. It, it, it really is a, a great area to fish. Little guy? It's uh, not as big as yours, that's for sure. I can't see him yet. Not the pole. A little guy. <laughs> a little guy. Yeah. A little, okay. little bar okay, of chrome. So this, that's a blackwater. Oh, well, yeah, that would be a blackwater yeah. fish, wouldn't it? Yeah, because it's a blackwater. So yeah, how, do you, how do you tell the difference between the two? Less spotting. Less spotting? Yeah. And the, the little bit more slender, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. 
hook fell out. Yeah. So based on the size of that fish, it, it's not very old, is it? No, it's this fish, this fish uh, would have been stocked last spring. Right. And yeah. but look at the girth; it's very chunky. Yeah, it's a pretty fish. Yeah. yeah. They're nice fish. And let it go. Well, Catch it next to you. <laughs> fish is a fish. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> can't complain. Yeah. yeah. I'll we'll get another one. Yep. Fraser Valley. Fraser Valley. Straight down. <laughs> this is a... That feels like a nicer fish. There we go. Perfect. So this fish right here, it's, uh, it's probably stocked from, it's from last year, right? Yeah, this, this fish would have been stocked last May, and it was only this big. Okay. So we'll take a look at this one. Hmm. So you can, pretty good growth. Yeah. yeah beautiful yeah, fish. Mm -hmm, beautiful. Yeah, so it's going to, it'll be twice as big next year. Next year, yeah. Yeah, this time next year that fish will be twice as big. Excellent, yeah. So we'll pretty good growth. Yeah, we'll catch again next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sounds good. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that happened. There's just what the heck? Yeah, we're on huh. fire. That indicator didn't even go down, and I I was just breathing, and I have a fish on there. Mm. That feels like a Fraser Valley too. Just kind of, I guess they they just love to dive. They don't really jump. <laughs> I think it's bigger than yours, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> At least I saw my indicator. I was watching right. my indicator. <laughs> yeah, mine just didn't even go down. He was swimming. He had it in his mouth, yeah. swimming away with it. Mm -hmm. I better, I'll pull you. Yeah, you should. <laughs> yeah. Let me knock. This is a bigger fish. All right. So these indicators are quick release indicators, right? So we. Well, they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be, yeah. <laughs> but it's not coming off, yeah. 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 Might have it just jammed a little too tight. Yeah. It should release. Oh yeah, they're Thank you. in pretty yeah. good. And the reason we're using quick release indicators is so that we can actually fish in pretty yeah. pretty deep water. Otherwise yeah. you have to do it what we just did. Yeah. Like pull a toothpick or yeah. something. Oh, that's oh, a little bit that's a little it's a nicer. Chunky fish. Strong though. Yeah, they are strong. Yeah. Oops. Oh, oh, it came off. We oh. nev we'll never know. <laughs> oh, I still got the fly. Still That's good. Fly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For this big. Yeah. It was this big. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. So Brian, so I've see, I see that you got quite a few rods with us there. I only brought this one rod, um, <laughs> but uh, why, why, why so many rods? Well, it's like shoes. Can only you yeah. can't just have one pair of shoes. Yeah. Got to no, have the toys. I, I guess. I've got different rods for different, you know, for sinking lines versus floating lines. And, right. I um, guess for different situations. Yeah, different and, situations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so for, so for people who want to get into this fishery, and obviously they can't go out and buy 10 different rods yeah. at once. What, what would be a standard rod and reel setup they should get uh, if they can only get one, one setup? Yeah, I, th I think the ideal setup would be a nine and a half foot rod in five or six weight. Right. And then 
that allow you to fish with long meters and indicators or without indicators and it'll be a good rod for throwing sinking lines mm -hmm. so but unfortunately we can't get away with just one fly line right. so we need like a floating line a floating line a slow sinking. sinker or an intermediate sinking right and and then a type three or a fast sinking and then maybe a, a real extra mm -hmm. fast sinking like right. a type six or a type seven mm -hmm. and that means so it's a fly rod a reel and then some spare spools for some the fly spools, reels yeah and all those lines can work yeah. that same rod it'll yeah. all work with that rod yeah. length be a perfect setup right well that's good yeah so today we started out pretty slowly the first two hours i guess we were looking for fish then finally i got into one pretty nice fish and then we missed a few bites and uh, then we got into a few smaller fish, and yeah. now just now they started kind of start biting yeah. again. So they kind of the bites kind of come on. Yeah, it's very very sporadic, and, yeah. and part of that reason is it is it's pretty hot out, and we're yeah. still in the summer hot summer period, and the fish are a little dour. They're not too aggressive, right. and we don't have a lot of hatches anymore. So you know they're they're eating a little bit here, a little bit there, and then they'll go off for a few right. hours, and that that's that's typical of late summer fishing right but that water choose those water temperatures drop in another two or three weeks the fishery will be totally different it, the fish will be a lot more aggressive and uh and they'll they'll want to feed all day long rather than just a couple times for short periods excellent well maybe i'll come back in two or three weeks from now absolutely yeah, I always love this area so so if, it, if if people have never been to this area before and want to get into fishing doing this type of fishing how would they go about it finding when it when it comes to finding information well, well, certainly there's a fair bit of information on the, the GoFishBC.com website. Right. Um, and then there's other uh, web websites like yours. You've got <laughs> lots of information on fishing with rod. And uh, um, so there, and there's a ser there's a several tackle stores in Kamloops that can give you updated information. The same in Merritt. Right. Uh, local, local, local information knowledge, is yeah. very updated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So ask them about fly patterns. What fly patterns, yeah. Yeah, and uh, parts of the lake to fish, depth zones to fish, things like that. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you very much for taking us out today. Yeah, we had a yeah. beautiful day, Rod. Yes, yeah, yeah. sure. We'll definitely see you in the boat. Hopefully, we can come back and try it again. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs>